Okay, so today we're going to talk about we're going to talk about vector valued functions. On vectors vectors are going to play a big a big part in what we what we do this uh, this semester. Um, so that's it's a uh, it's going to be a pretty pretty important topic that that we're going to hit from a lot of a lot of different angles. Um, so so far we've used um, we use parametric equations to 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 describe uh, to describe a curve in in a plane. We're talking about it in the x y plane. We have a set of parametric equations, and we can use uh, we can say that um, we have parametric equations that we worked quite a bit with last semester, where we have x is some function of t, and y is some other function of t, and we use that to to describe to describe a, a curve. In, in the plane, it gives us our x and y coordinates. We did this a lot with um, with polar coordinates. We can um, we can do the same thing. We can do the same thing in three dimensions. Um, so we can describe a curve in space with um, three parametric equations. And we have our three equations: x is f of t, y is g of t, and z is h of t. And for any value of t, we get we get a a position, a point in in space. We can also use these equations. The reason we call it we're, we're talking about vector valued functions. We can use our x, y, and z uh, coordinates to be the components of a position vector. And so, if if we let each of these be the components of a position vector, if we put in uh, a real number for t, we get out a vector, and that's why we call it a vector-valued function. For if we input a real number, our output is our output is a vector. So our position vector, we would say. Our, our parametric equations give us a position vector that we call R of t. And R of t is going to be f of ti plus g of tj plus h of t <clears throat> and the tip of our position vector is going to describe the curve in space. As t changes, the tip of the vi position vector is going to move, and we get we get a curve in space defined by this by this vector by this vector valued function. And if we draw a picture of of what we're talking about, just a quick um, a quick sketch. Here are our, our axes. We have x, y, and z, and our curve. We'll do the curve in red. So we have our curve here. And each our our vector valued function, our position vector, if we We can draw a vector here, and we'll call this this 
is R1. R2. And R3. So as T varies, we get, um, we get these different position vectors and the tip of the vector traces out our curve. And we can project we can project this curve down into the xy plane. If I project it down, we could say this point is projected down into the xy plane is here. We could say that point is here, and that point is here. So if we project these points down, we're also going to get a curve projected into the, into the xy plane. And that's how we're going to, that's what we're going to do to, um, to visualize what these curves look like is we're going to look at their projections in the coordinate planes. Kind of like we did with surfaces when we saw how they intersected the coordinate planes. Um, we're going to look at the projections of these vectors into the coordinate planes to, to, um, to help us visualize them. And I'm just going to move this R2. Questions so far? Um, when we're working with the uh, vector valued functions, the domain of the vector valued function is the intersection of the domains of the component functions. So if we have our, our radius vector, f of ti plus g of t, j plus h of tk. So it's the, the domain of our vector function is the intersection of the domains of f, g, and h. So there'll be some homework problems that ask you to find the domain of a of a vector valued function. And we just you just have to look at the domain of the of the component functions and find where they're where the intersection of those domains is. So that's the extent of today's notes. But we're gonna do a little bit of a little bit of practice. So in your books, um, in your books on page um, eight thirty seven. Everybody have a book? <laughs> we need to borrow a book? Um, we're looking at uh, at page, page 837, number 17 through 20. No, no, we're going to do this all, all together. So this is, no, no, this is, this is just in class kind of practice. Um, so we're going to, we're going to look at these just to get a little practice on, on visualizing visualizing what uh, vector value functions look like. It's a little different, it's a little different than other kinds of functions. So number 17, our radius, our R of T is Ti plus 2Tj plus uh, T squared K. And we're saying that negative Two less than or equal to t less than or equal to two, and we want to match this. Um, we want to match this 
this uh, vector valued function to one of those graphs. So the way we do this, the way I recommend doing this is a lot like we did with, um, with surfaces. What, what we want to do is look at what the projection looks like in the various, various coordinate planes. So if we let, um, if we're looking just in the XY plane, in the XY plane, we have, um, you know, that X equals T and Y equals 2T. So that tells us in the XY plane, we have um, y equals 2x. So we just have a line in the xy plane. <clears throat> How about in the, um, in the xz plane? In the xz plane, we have z equals x squared. So we have a parabola. If we project this into the uh, xz plane, we have z equals x squared. And how about the uh, yz plane? Z equals y squared over 4. There we go. So we have a if we project this into the, the x, into the y, z plane, we have z equals y squared over 4. So uh, in the x, y plane, we have a line. In the x, z plane, we have a parabola. In the y, z plane, we have a parabola. So which one does that match? B. That one matches B. So the graph of this vector valued function would be that graph, uh, the graph on B. If you, if you project if you project that parabola straight down into the xy plane, you just get a line. And if you project it onto the other coordinate axes, you get, um, you get parabolas. How about number, number 18? We have R of T is cosine pi T i plus sine pi t j plus e to the oh sorry t I'm looking at the next one So here's our here's our position vector. Um, so what is which one is this going to match up with? <clears throat> we we have C. Um, and what makes you say C? It's a circle in the x y plane. If we project this into the x y plane, we get a circle because x squared plus y squared equals one. And then um, and then t the t squared k and makes it makes it go upwards in the in the z direction as we increase from t equals zero to t equals or t equals negative one to t equals one. Does everybody see that? All right. How about number? How about number nineteen? Number nineteen is a little little different. R of t equals T i plus T squared j plus e to the point seven five T k, and we have negative two less than or equal to T less than or equal to two. So what do we think about this one? Got a couple of D's. Everybody agree? In the in the X Y plane, if we project this to the X Y plane, what do we get? Mm -hmm. 
y equals x squared. So if we project this into the xy plane, we get a, a parabola. Um, and then in the xz plane, we get an exponential function. z equals uh, e to the 0.75x. So we get an exponential function projected into the, into the xz plane. So this one would match D. And we're only left with one for number 20. 20 has to match, match A. So does this make sense? In order to, uh, in order to see what the, in order to visualize what the, per, what the vector value function looks like, we want to look at the projections in the coordinate planes. Questions? Okay. Homework. There you go.